get our first look at Marvel's Eternals. Sonic the Hedgehog and Horizon Forbidden West tease some big reveals this week. And I've got some thoughts on Biomutant and Wonder Boy Asha in Monster World. All that and the latest in everything cool today in The Rundown. Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day today. It's good to see everybody in the chat room. My name is Victor Lucas, and the way that it works around here, I see that there might be a couple of new people in here. Leon, Michael, good to see you. Um, we are going to be uh, doing the rundown live, and then we're going to dive right into playing a little bit of Biomutant. And I know that it is uh, not getting the greatest reviews out there. Uh, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about my experiences so far before we get into the Let's Play. Uh, but I'll spoil it a little bit. I'm not, I'm having an okay time with this game. It's not terrible. Um, good day, Matthew Winstone. Good to see you. Ooh, uh, Nak uh, Navix La. Hello, good to see you. Christopher Huggins, yo, good to see you too. Barco Teacup and pa uh, Pathetic Earthling and Vague Zone uh, Podcast. Pathetic Earthling was first in the room. Yes, you were. Good to see everybody. Let's get started with your rundown. Okay, there we go. I have to do the intro again because I'll cut this out later. Hey, welcome to The Rundown, everybody. My name is Victor Lucas, and it is my pleasure to bring you some very fun news to talk about today. And of course, this is brought to you by our friends at the Gaming Stadium. They are Canada's leader in online esports tournament facilitation. They've got tournaments happening every weekend, like this next one coming up, so you don't want to miss out on the action. You can join up with them at tgs.gg. Now, today's episode is dedicated to our friend Perpetual Christopher, who had this to say, I always thought it was inevitable for the Time Splitters franchise to get some sort of remastered treatment, especially Future Perfect, the third but most highly acclaimed entry in the series. I hope somewhere down the line this can still happen after the new game's release. And I think what's going on is that this Time Splitters, uh, you know, re uh, revitalization around Time Splitters, this new re invention that's happening is getting everybody talking, uh, you know, about the glory days, especially thinking back to the days of Rare and thinking about what this means, not only for THQ Nordic and the new Free Radical, uh, but for other franchises out there as well. And certainly Mass Effect Legendary Edition is doing that right now, too. Anyways, we've got some other stuff to talk about today. Let's get started with your rundown. Yesterday, Marvel dropped a very nice teaser for their brand new Eternals movie. This is their new collection of superheroes. They're actually not new because they've been around since the 1970s. Uh, Chloe Zhao is the filmmaker that's going to be leading the charge on this movie or has led the charge in this movie. It was supposed to come out last year, but of course it has not uh, because of, well, I think you guys know what's going on. Uh, anyways, it's coming out this November and we got a nice little taste of all this cast of thousands that's in the movie movie. There are a lot of really, really solid actors and performers in here. Some surprising choices. Um, we've got uh, uh, Richard Madden, who uh, was on Game of Thrones, Angelina Jolie, Salma Hayek, uh, Kumail Nanjiani is part of the cast member, uh, part of the cast members in here. And it's got a kind of an ethereal, magical, outer space, cosmic kind of vibe. These are kind of, they're, they're gods on Earth, which I think you can kind of levy at a, a lot of the superheroes. But what they kind of talk about in this trailer is that they've been silently watching the world and seeing some of the choices that they make. Also, I guess, talking a little bit about some of the super heroics that have transpired. And it really does feel like this new super team that we're going to get to know is incredibly powerful. I like that there's a little bit of a sense of humor about their integration and what they've witnessed with the Avengers. And um, I, I, one of them I, at the end of the trailer sort of suggests maybe I could be the new leader. And I like the kind of sense of humor that they have around there. We don't get a really big sense of who these characters are um, as people, we see them throughout ages and we see that there's some uh, relationships and stuff, but there's a great deal of mystery, unless, of course, you're one of the people that has read all of the Eternals comics over the years and you know exactly what Marvel's got planning here. Uh, but I like the imagery. I, I uh, certainly liked the kind of naturalism that Chloe Zhao just showed off in Nomadland. It kind of applied to a superhero tale like this. This is a bit of a strange one. It's kind of like, uh, like uh, Earth's first Comic Con where everybody's just paused outside here. I actually I want to pause on that one for a second because it's it's a it's kind of an interesting one. We don't normally see the superheroes just sort of standing there like that, do we? 
Um, but uh, yeah, it's like a good look at their costumes. And, uh, you know, it's definitely intriguing, but I don't think, and I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I, I haven't really seen the effect or the cool sort of character hook that is making me go, oh my God, we've never seen anything like this in Marvel before. And I cannot wait to see, I mean, even this is is kind of like an Avengers dinner table scene in, in a way, but with characters that we don't really know yet. Um, but I am a fan of the filmmaker. She really impressed me with Nomadland. I'm also a fan of Marvel uh, bringing up a lot of you know, second and third tier superheroes, characters that we don't really know and then making us care about them. They've done that time and again over the years. Uh, so I'm expecting big things. I'm also a fan of Marvel taking risks and trying new things and uh, you know, trying to kind of come at this in a bunch of different ways. I want to know what you guys think, though. Are you excited about Eternals? It's coming out finally this year in November. I know people have been waiting for this for a long time, especially the cast of thousands that's in this movie. Kumail Nanjiani got all stacked for the film. He's all buff, and he's just been sort of waiting to show off the bod, and now he's going to finally do that in this new movie. Uh, I hope it's great, though. I am a huge MCU fan, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, some big announcements that are happening this week. Woke up to some really nice news today. Sonic Central tweeted out, or Sonic the Hedgehog, if Sonic's got a Twitter a Twitter account, I guess, but uh, he tweeted out that there's going to be a, a Sonic um, video uh, event happening on May 27th at 9 o'clock in the morning. They're going to be uh, taking a look at some new Sonic news. There was also a tweet with this really kind of special look back at the 30-year history of Sonic the Hedgehog, and it just makes you feel pretty damn fantastic especially if you're like me and you've been along for the ride for this whole time and you've been sort of you know racing alongside Sonic the Hedgehog and it blew the character and Sega's work on the franchise blew your mind when they first appeared on the Sega Genesis it's pretty amazing to see where they've come now and this Sonic Unstoppable uh, you know kind of commercial that they popped out there showcased Sonic's uh, connections to the art world and to the video game world of course but how we kind of apply our imagery through video games and we see this kind of tragic guy gets pushed over into the mud but he gets up gets up and can see the sonic rigs rings ahead of him and can run a little bit faster i thought that was pretty cute um, but i think that there's a message here in that th the worlds that we sort of embody and live in in the video game space are real worlds as well you know and they have a cultural impact and an emotional impact on us and that's what this the spot kind of symbolizes like how many different ways in there there are for fans of Sonic the Hedgehog. So uh, in a couple more days, we're going to get some really uh, hopefully amazing news from Sonic um, and, uh, you know, maybe a nice little teaser of the movie and maybe there's a new game that's kind of in the vein, I hope, of uh, the Sonic Mania game. Uh, but we don't have long to wait. That's pretty cool. And then, of course, uh, Guerrilla Games and Sony and all kinds of people affiliated with PlayStation were tweeting about a Horizon Forbidden West event that's also on Thursday, May 27th. Uh, so we're going to have to kind of schedule everything. And, of course, I'll do a nice little recap for everybody on, on Thursday. Maybe I'll stream some of this. Um, oh, it's a 10 at night, so I don't think I'll be streaming that. Or oh, 10 at night Eastern Standard Time. Well, however this plays, we will stream some. We will talk about it. There was a blog post about, um, you know, some of the details that we're going to see some actual gameplay. I think that they've been pretty re revelatory with this game already. There's been a uh, Guerrilla Games Talks About Horizon video that's out there uh, sort of examining the gameplay and kind of getting us caught up on the lore. Of course, everybody knows this is just a massive open world action adventure role playing experience. Lots of really interesting, mysterious connections to the reality uh, that we know, but, you know, fused with this hyper reality and this surreality that they've got within the game. You see a lot of kind of Planet of the Apes style destroyed human environments in the background that are just very mysterious, you know. Um, I love the first game, so I'm very, very excited to see where Forbidden West takes us. The only thing that was kind of strange, and I think if everybody can remember this, is that uh, the first Horizon game 
came out right around the same time as The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And and as amazing as Zero Dawn was, I think it got a little overshadowed by how incredible Breath of the Wild was. Even if, uh, Johnny Millennium from Happy Console Gamer and I even got together and did kind of a head-to-head versus on both of those games. And they were both so phenomenal. Uh, but it's going to be awesome to see what Gorilla can do with the PlayStation 5. That's going to be coming out later this year, and we're going to find out more about Uh, Forbidden West later this week. Can't wait. All right. Now, I have been playing a couple of uh, pretty substantial games over the weekend. I've been uh, playing a little bit more of a game called Biomutant, and I wanted to talk to you guys about that. This is, um, you know, an open world action adventure role playing type of experience. You you create your own little mutant furry critter, and then you give them uh, physical sort of uh, abilities and or physical sort of uh, characteristics, and then uh, with those physical characteristics, you get uh, new abilities and you gain uh, new technologies that you can implement into your gameplay. And what you do is uh, cruise across this vast open landscape. Sometimes you're on water, sometimes you're on horseback. Oftentimes you're getting into battle with creatures that are much larger than you. And it's a pretty sweet looking game. I have to say there's a, a, you know, again, a kind of a mysterious tone to everything. And we're playing in a post-apocalypse. It's a kind of, you know, it's like a furry horizon type game, which is crazy. Uh, And it certainly made me think of games uh, like the Assassin's Creed franchise. Um, You know, there's lots of open world experiences out there that we can kind of connect this to. What's interesting about this game is that it was made by not an incredibly large team, uh, but I think they had some pretty grand ambitions with the game, and you can kind of feel it buckling under the weight of those ambitions. The story is kind of cool. Um, you, you're trying to, you, you know, fight back some tribes or bring tribes together. You go on missions for all kinds of different characters that you're going to meet at, that are populated in little villages and alongside road stops. You'll, of course, get into kind of barter situations where you can buy all kinds of stuff from people that you meet along the way or characters that you meet. There are flashbacks sequences you're seeing something like that right here where you uh you are integrating with your family and you're learning some new skills and some new uh, attacks and things um and then every once in a while you'll encounter uh creatures that will make you flashback and you're kind of you know obtaining your backstory as you go which i thought was pretty cool um here's a sequence here where uh, you're kind of flashing back to when you learned how to swim and the first time that i jumped in the water i almost immediately drowned and then you get a this character named Goop who teaches you a little bit of how to swim and then later on you'll encounter some of these characters and you have matured and and they have matured and everybody's been through some stuff by uh, you get by the time you get into the deeper kind of storyline and what you see throughout Biomutant is that there are irradiated areas there are uh, poisoned areas there's oil all over the place there's goop everywhere and so sometimes you need to jump into a giant mech and cruise around and um, you there's ammunition, which uh, sometimes is living and, and can be implemented. So it re- reminded me a little bit of the Odd World games when I was playing that. And everything that you kind of attach to your body, whether it's weaponry or, or clothing or items or the things that you pick up, can all be um, customized. And it's all crudely Mad Max customized. You're basically, you know, uh, tinkering and playing with the garbage of fallen civilizations and just kind of stapling them to your, you know, your coat or your your mask or something. I've got this giant raccoon helmet on my head right now, my little character. Um, and and so you get armor stats and, and uh, you also pick up augments like um, some... Uh, biological augments that uh, will make you tougher. Uh, There's some sort of, uh, you know, ethereal sort of magical augments in there as well, which will, uh, you know, help you with uh, some of the attacks that you have. Uh, You have the ability to like blast some flame behind you. And what you're, you know, ultimately trying to do, or at least as far as I have gotten into the game, I haven't finished the game, but you're trying to take down these giants, these world eaters. And you can see I just took down one of the ones right there in this little piece here. And what happens is they uh, they fight you in different ways. This particular one ingested me, and I had to shoot it from the inside, and then I took it. I, I, I you know I took I took it out after that, um, which was pretty cool. And they're all trying to get to this uh, world tree in the center of the map, and uh, they're gnawing at its roots. 
And so there is this, you know, overall message in the game uh, about trying to kind of honor um, nature and trying to, you know, have these Zen sensibilities where you respect other people. They even have like a uh, um, a light and dark meter in there as well, where you can choose to to uh, go with a you know the sort of the good side of your conscience or take the darker side of your conscience, the the bad side of your conscience, and you have these sort of uh, um, Mass Effect like you know Paragon. Uh, type choices that you encounter along the way um and you can decide to be a badass and a scumbag and look out for yourself or you can kind of try to help the people and you know i think some of that stuff is pretty cool it's just a little tedious the game and the beginning is just insufferably long it just took way too long to kind of get cooking i also felt like there's some uh you know real disconnect on on in the combat sequences um, it, you know, this is no Ghost of Tsushima by any stretch of the imagination. It's not satisfying to take out the uh, the bad guys. You you learn some pretty cool moves, and there's some pretty interesting animations. It just doesn't have that tactility. It doesn't really have the impact when you're knocking back some of the bad guys and some of the bosses. They're still cool looking, though. And what I've found with the game is that it's enjoyable to uh, to chill into it. You know, I think this is. And I saw somebody on the internet talking about this that. This is a good one to kind of sip and not to kind of like, you know, get it all in in the weekend because there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of detail. There's lots to see. It's a it's a fairly robust game. It's not as tuned as the best open world experiences out there, but it's pretty impressive that this is a uh, a 20 person team that has built a game this large. It reminds me of, you know, double A experiences that THQ and other publishers used to bring out for us back in the PlayStation 2 and uh, uh, Xbox 360 era, uh, or I guess it's PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 era, that sort of time span in there. There were lots of, uh, you know, swings, and not all of them were home runs, but there were lots of great AA experiences that were very fun to play. And I didn't create a list for you guys right now to compare this to, but uh, I think every one of us that has been gaming for a long time has lots of games that we have played um, that, uh, you know, maybe weren't the best uh, of the AAA type of experiences out there, but they were still fun in their own right and still had their own ambition and, and uh, you still had some real joy out of them. And I think that this game is in there for sure. Now, I haven't, finished it i haven't gotten quite far enough that i can give it a score but i do like it i do like the game didn't like the beginning i found it insufferable one of the things that really bugs me about the game although you can toggle it down is you, you um get into these dialogue sequences with all of these furry critters and they um uh they won't speak to you in english so you have this narrator that uh has to basically tell you what they're saying but you hear them for a little bit then you hear the narrator and then you get into um uh, you know your choices and so it's just this clunky cumbersome kind of interface where it takes way too long to kind of get to the point and get the dialogue and the way that they've set up your choices in dialogue isn't incredibly clear i mean that's what you can say about this game in general it's it's clunky it's clumsy uh but there's so many details and there's so much it's ambition there's so much ambition there's so much effort to entertain us in this game that I think it's worth checking out, you know? I, I really do. I'm going to play it some more, and I'll give you guys my final thoughts on the thing, but uh, so far I've been having a pretty good time with Biomutant. Okay, let's talk about uh, Wonder Boy, Asha in Monster World, which is a mouthful of a title, but a pretty um, easy to get into and enjoyable experience of a game. This is uh, based on the old Monster World titles that came out back in the 16-bit eras. Everything's been, you know, lovingly crafted in three dimensions now, although most of the action takes place on a kind of a 2D plane. You do go into the screen, but for the most part, you're navigating, uh, you know, horizontally or vertically through uh, these different maze-like environments where there are monsters that you have to defeat, as the title implies, and chat that you have to unlock that will give you bags of gold, very much like the old Greedy Productions money bag. Um, sometimes you'll get bombs, sometimes you get little health power-ups like you get right there. If you collect 10 of those little teardrop things, you get an extra heart. Um, and then you get magical equipment and stuff that you will pick up. Uh, and of course, you're going to 
go into boss fights and battle all kinds of big creatures. I, you know, and it's kind of stylistically a, a little simple and a, it definitely kind of Saturday morning, super animated kind of style to it. But it's also incredibly inviting and easy to play. And I found it kind of interesting to bounce off of Biomutant where you're kind of trying to decipher the systems and what the designers were intending for some of their choices. And then you drop into uh, uh, Asha and Monster World and it's just so straightforward. You know, you just have to, I mean, sometimes you do get stuck for sure. And I'm actually at a, a point in the game. I haven't played this one as much as I have played Biomutant yet, but I am stuck in a point where I've saved and um, I don't have enough of um, uh, the materials that I need to be able to defeat the boss. So I'm sa I'm saved right before a boss, and it's in this volcano space in here. And you see I've got this little kind of uh, creature that helps you to do double jumps, and they do something different here where you, you can't always double jump. You actually have to grab the creature, and then you can jump off of the creature. And so you have to call the creature to you. So that affects the timing, especially if you've done something like thrown the creature uh, out a little ways and then you have to bring it back to you and you've got a platform that's moving um, and so you've got to do it fairly quickly and it can be a little bit frustrating so uh, it's definitely an easy game to play but there are absolutely some interesting challenges along the way and some uh, patterns and some systems that you kind of have to figure out because there'll be choke points I mean there just is and uh, but it's still elegantly crafted and it's done with such love it's hard to uh, uh, be upset with the game I mean I, I find it quite joyous and I'm, I'm, I'm digging the music and I'm digging the art style I, I like the way that uh, uh, you know Asha even opens the chests you know there's just this sense of levity and joy in this game uh, but again, I need to play this a little bit more, and I'll come back with some final thoughts on it. But so far, thumbs up on uh, mo uh, on uh, Wonder Boy <laughs> Asha in Monster World, which is based on Monster World 4. Uh, but yeah, been having a very good time with that. Okay, I've got a couple more things that I want to tell you guys about. I got uh, a uh, press release for a game called Stonefly today. This is made by the developers that brought out Creature in the Well a couple of years ago, and this has been in development for a while. It's an action-adventure game where you get around with these little uh, bug-like creations that you make. And so there's a, a combat kind of setup to everything, and it's you know you can customize all kinds of stuff with these different creatures. So it's a little bit like you're, you're flying around like a garden, and you're blasting away in these bug ships but there's also a tremendous amount of um, strategy and lots of great little details little honey I shrunk the kids kind of vibe around all of this stuff it looks really cool and it looks like there's been a lot of effort put into not just getting you into the action but also building a whole world and a story around all of this stuff this comes out on June 1st I'm going to be getting a switch code for this so I will uh, it's out on everything by the way this is coming to all the platforms and the PC. Um, I think it's been, it might already be in early access on Steam, but um, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I was a little bit, uh, uh, you know, my first blush, I'm like, well, it looks a little bit simple. And then you sort of see all of the different details, the customization options and the different weaponry options that you have. Um, you know, it's a different take on it, this Lilliputian kind of uh, action vehicle-based combat, you know, scenario where you can fly around. That is going to be coming out in, uh, well, just a few days' time. So I'll, you know, I'll check back here for more on Stonefly. And um, one last thing that I wanted to tell you guys about today. Today we got the, uh, the news that Axiom Verge 2, which I've been dying to play, uh, which was initially scheduled to come out last year, has been delayed. Uh, Thomas Happ... Um, uh, you know, is working on this thing in so, solo, just like he did the first Axiom Verge game. And both of it, well, I haven't played this yet, but Axiom, Axiom Verge was just phenomenal. It took me a couple kicks at it to really appreciate the game. I re-reviewed it just last year, actually, for the Nintendo Switch. It's an excellent fit on that platform, but you can pick it up for everything. I think this trailer actually is from the Wii version or the Wii U version of the game. So it's been around for a while, but holy crap, do you need to play this game? But as part of the announcement today, uh, Thomas Happ and IGN also uh, I, um, I dropped the uh, behind the scenes on the making of Axiom Verge. And I really recommend it's free. You can watch it on the IGN site and uh, it's incredible. I mean, there, it's a really honest portrait of how this game has come together. 
um, and it's a look into Tom Hap's life, and uh, he, you know, he's really working his butt off to entertain us, and he really did with the first one. So if you haven't played Axiom Verge, get that, and uh, you know, do what you can to check out um, the uh, Axiom Verge doc. I totally recommend that, uh, and then keep your eyes peeled for news of an announcement of when we're actually going to get Axiom Verge 2. Can't wait for this game. It looks like it's going to be incredibly fun. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for the rundown. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow with a fresh episode for you, so please come back for that. But if you enjoyed the rundown, if you enjoy our content, please consider hitting that subscribe button and that little bell to be notified. Thank you so much to all of our subscribers and, of course, to all of our EPN members. You guys rock. We'll see you soon. And until then, play forever. Welcome to This Day and Everything Cool for May 25th. On this day in 1977, the galaxy changed forever. You know what we're talking about. The original Star Wars movie was released in theaters across the U.S. Written and directed by George Lucas, Star Wars was an homage to adventure serials, fantasy storytelling, and classic character archetypes, but took all those old ideas and put a modern spin on them, thrusting the story into space and telling it with state-of-the-art visual effects and fast-paced editing. Distributor 20th Century Fox didn't expect the film to be a hit, so on its first day, it was only given a limited release in just 32 theaters. But when audiences caught on to just how good the movie was, it soon expanded and became a global phenomenon. It's easy to forget just how much Star Wars changed the movie industry and the entire entertainment landscape. It turned Hollywood into the summer blockbuster factory and also showed for the first time the importance of tie-in marketing and merchandise. Like how Star Wars paid homage to older movies, pretty much every big movie since has tried to emulate Star Wars in some way or another. Exactly six years later, the original Star Wars trilogy came to an end on May 25, 1983. Lucasfilm released the third installment, Return of the Jedi, in theaters across the U.S., bringing the story of Luke Skywalker and his fight against the villainous Darth Vader to a conclusion. Jedi once again pushed the envelope of special effects technology featuring state-of-the-art models, puppetry, and compositing in both space and planetary landscapes. It's not a perfect film, though. Many point to Return of the Jedi as the beginning of a major shift in the Star Wars franchise, with George George Lucas introducing new characters and ideas meant to appeal to younger audiences, moving it away from the tone of the more adult-focused first and second films. The trend continued in the various expanded universe content that followed and was kicked into overdrive when the prequels started coming out. Still, Return of the Jedi is a pretty great movie and is remembered fondly by pretty much everyone. Thanks to the success of Star Wars, the sci-fi genre grew and Fox unleashed a much more terrifying sci-fi film exactly two years after Star Wars came out. On May 25th, 1979, the original Alien movie burst into theaters, chilling audiences with its terrifying tale of space travelers who encounter a horrific alien creature. Alien was the first big movie directed by Ridley Scott, and one of the most chilling things about it is the atmospheric visual style that he created, not to mention the alien creature designs by Swiss painter H.R. Geiger. It also also launched the career of star Sigourney Weaver, who went on to appear in several Alien sequels. All right, you guys, you're ready to play a little bit of uh, Biomutant. We're going to be playing it on the Xbox Series X. Let us go into the picture in picture right there. And thank you, Pathetic Earthling and Peter Kokosar for becoming new members. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for the support. Um, okay, we are going to be jumping in. And uh, what I have done... Hey, VR Grid, how you doing? Good to see you. I um, have killed a couple of those giant World Eater bosses. And uh, so I'm a little bit further into the game. I didn't want to start from the beginning and show you guys that stuff because honestly the beginning is oh, daniel wilson you guys this is fantastic thank you for becoming a member you guys are incredible uh the opening of the game is honestly the worst part of this experience because it does it does open up and get a little bit better i didn't talk when i was sort of uh 
there's so much. There's so many little details. But you also have this little automaton, which is kind of like this grasshopper type creature, at least right now. I haven't been able to change the look of them. Um, but uh, you have this little automaton that will uh, cruise around and help you out. Gives you uh, the ability to um, uh, hover. And then there's a turret sort of ability that it's got as well. So it's my little pal that's following along. And I have, I'll show you guys my weapons here for a second too. I didn't really show this off. Um, so my gear, again, I mean, even this interface is just confusing as well. Like it's all, I, I, you get to know it, but there's just so much detail. Like these are all the missions that I've got to go on. The map is pretty large. There's a lot of areas that I have yet to explore. I've done a pretty good chunk of it already though. Um, and I've got two more of the world eaters, but I'm sure uh, there's going to be another layer of, um, uh, you know, objective after that. And each of these little areas is rife with towns and different uh, villages and, and, and bandits and things like that that I have to take out. There's fast travel across the map as well, which are these little yellow uh, dots right there. But I'm in combat right now, so I can't. And then, oh, I was going to show you the, uh, the character... So that's my character right now. I have this crazy mask on. And uh, I can um, craft. Like I can show you guys how I can craft some stuff for the mask. Which it's just garbage. You just like stapling garbage to your mask. Um, but one thing that I didn't like about the whole setup here is that it doesn't really tell you that you don't have any from, from this. So it's like from here, I want to click modify, then I want to add something to my thing. And then I can see like, that's new cause there's a little star there, but I need these, uh, I need these little O rings or something like that. And I don't have any. And so there's none of that info until you're actually trying to manipulate and you can choose it. And you stick it on there, and then you can't craft it. And so you press the B button to go back. I mean, there's just some interface issues that makes it way, uh, way too complicated. It should be a lot easier for you to be able to augment. And honestly, I mean, this this Mad Max kind of, um, you know, dystopian kind of uh, outfitting like we've done it to death. <laughs> it should just look cooler, you know? Like, I've got a gun that's a trumpet right now, which I, I don't want a trumpet gun, but it's my most powerful gun. It's, it's a trumpet gun, okay? So that's what I'm going to shoot this guy with. Trumpet gun. I like the little comic book um, onomatopoeia that pops up. I think that's pretty cool. Vaskeezy, yeah, I think the, the poor dev team, you know, like... I think they delivered most of what they convinced THQ Nordic they were going to make. And then it's pretty easy to play, you know, 20 hours of the game and go, ah, it's okay. But there's there's actually a lot of game. I mean, I try to I, I try to think about all of that when I'm talking about these things. It's not just this game. It's all of these games. Hey, Leslie, thank you so much. It's great to have the new members in here. You guys are incredible. Um, but, you know, there is a, a lot of good work in this game, you know, and the game is not just a moment. It is, what is this? This guy's, I think there's a bug right there. It is uh, the collection of all of these moments and all of these little mysteries and stuff. And, you know, what's true about games now, though, is that they, especially in this kind of digital era, era and with Game Pass and stuff, is... And look at No Man's Sky. Like, the launch of a game is just the beginning of it, right? And so if they keep tuning and tweaking and patching, this thing is going to evolve into something that people talk about. And I think that's probably part of the... Um, and I'm not talking about critics. I'm talking about just gamers. I think that's part of the the idea here, you know? They, they got it. They made it. Um, they probably were under-resourced and, and worked their asses off to, to get this done. And they delivered it. And I've been having fun. Like, I haven't been hating it at all. I've been having fun. It's it's just not as good as the best of this genre. And there's a lot of really good. Chat's really popping off today, Abby Jamison says. Yeah, this is amazing. Um, something about this has a, a, a vibe of a lot of epic stuff, is what um, uh, Vague Zone podcast, podcast is saying. 
I, Marco, I don't know if that big guy just died just like that. It looks looked a little bit weird, right? Okay, so I do have a mount. Um, I can't call the mech ton, and I can't call the goo glide, but I can call my goat, my note, my note, note. Doesn't riding a beast like this feel good? And so here is your um, little big planet like narrator who's in the entire game, and sometimes will just get on your nerves, and of course the. Uh, the story has been um, critterfied, right? So these these uh, animal creatures that have been mutated, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle type characters, uh, they have their own language. And so, uh, it, you know, there's a lot of um, explanation in the story that isn't exactly what you're looking at, but it's because it's the animal's interpretation of, uh, of what they're seeing, which is okay. I mean, it, I like that I don't know what the hell is going on in the game. I like that it's it's uh, a, con a confusing, kind of messy thing. I kind of like that, you know? It's like, oh, there's another layer of trying to figure it out. It's not holding your hand at all. Okay, so I'm trying to get back to a character named Out of Date. Um, the way games are now, though, is that people move on so quick. Blair, you know, I agree with you, Blair Farrell. Um, people do move on quick. And I don't know if uh, Game Pass makes that better or worse. <laughs> because, you know, when you're... I, I don't know how many times you guys have been partway through a Netflix movie or show, and it's just like, I'm out. I'm not digging this, and I got a lot of other things. I think games, um, you know... I think what we're probably going to see is this phenomenon of games having these incredible openings that are working so hard to keep you hooked into the experience. I mean, games have always done that, but when you've got a buffet in front of you, I think that's going to become standard. Um, but I also think that people are going to have no patience and they're going to bounce out. But then you see a game like Ancestors, which uh, Patrice Desolet, um made, the he former uh, lead on Assassin's Creed, uh, and his studio, and I played it a little bit, and I, I was underwhelmed. I thought there were some great ideas in the game, but I, it, again, didn't hook me, so I didn't really oh, stay with it to come back and talk about it. But it sold uh, over a million units. Like, it's done well, you know? And, and I see that all the time. It's like these little games that you think, you, you know, you may have discovered some personal little thing um, has actually gone on and has found a life out there and, and has sold a million or two million or three million sometimes. Sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes it's not a weekend. And maybe in the course of that, a team gets disbanded or shrunk or, or you know, some massive changes happen. But, um, I, you know, the industry is reaching more people in different types of ways. And I saw somebody talking about the... Uh, um, uh, the Steam Pal. I, ha, has that been officially announced, or is it still speculation? I didn't want to talk about it until there was like a little bit more. I, I, Sam just DM'd me, Sam Moskovich from Ars Technica, with a wink, wink, saying this is what I was talking about with an article, but I didn't have time to read it before uh, I went live. Too cool. I am doing well, but that's another example. Thank you for being here. That's another example of uh, games reaching, if it's true reaching people in a lot of different interesting ways. Yeah, you forgot about Ancestors, and you're probably shocked that it sold a million units, right, Blair? <laughs> As I was. <laughs> How much of a game sells might just mean it's mostly bought on curiosity, but are they actually playing it, Orion's Angel? Yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's that metric and that tracking, and, and honestly, that's how a lot of the, uh, hey, Rob Rowe, thank you so much. This is, uh, this is incredible. Lots of new members today. It's great to have the support. Um, uh, that's another metric, and it's, I think, a huge metric on uh, the free-to-play stuff out there. You know, the, the amount of players playing at the same time is definitely something that a lot of chess beating it, it is happening in the game space right now. Deservedly so. Um, and I think that's going to be, a, a, you know, honestly a way just like, Netflix, Netflix ratings and Disney Plus type ratings are based on um, streaming acquisitions and subscriptions and, and uh, actual viewer now accounts and, and you know people sticking with a show from beginning to end and the algorithm is completely aware of all that. That's going to be a big, big part of um, how games get financed uh, because with this 
you know, subscription based always on digitally connected kind of reality that games are becoming, the analytical data is just becoming incredibly precise. And so, um, like we're seeing with uh, uh, the Netflix algorithm sort of defining and deciding what gets greenlit and what gets another season and all that stuff, I think we're going to see some some similar kinds of things start to happen with what we know now as kind of the traditional video game space. It's been happening like that in mobile forever, but we're also going to start to see that in, um, in traditional games. So that opening for Game Pass games, and this is probably a couple of years away, but especially if you're a younger team or a, a, you know, a, a team that's getting their first game out the door, that beginning sequence in a game is going to become increasingly important. You're going to have to blow people away to keep them hooked. It's new member Tuesday, Sam. I am one one one. Well, it's great to see. It's incredible to see. You know what? I'd love to know. I always love to know who's joining this stream for the first time. Who's uh, you know, checking out EP, um, maybe for the first time in a while, or maybe you just discovered EP on YouTube. Uh, maybe you just saw my tweet. Tell me if you're new. I love it. Vic, we need uh, NWO-inspired T-shirts for EPN with all of these new members. <laughs> we do need new T-shirts. Listen, I'm trying to figure things out. I think I, I, you guys can tell me. You're all in the chat right now. You know, a lot of people like to watch the archive of the rundown, and a lot of people like to be here for the streams. YouTube is great for collecting all of it. Hey, Wood. Good to see you. But of course, Twitch's, their whole business model is live. And so I'm I'm starting to wonder if it's time. And I created EP Live, the YouTube channel, to be the place that we would stream uh, live from. And then I would we would take that content and put it onto the regular Electric Playground channel. And that might be the, the course here. Or is it time for me to think of doing these live shows on Twitch and then taking that and then uh, placing the the um, archived content on the YouTube channel. What do you guys think? <laughs> I'm a closet viewer, but it's your cheeks that pulled me in today. Oh, man, that's awesome. <laughs> Zip up hoodies with the large EPN logo. I'm not wearing mine today. Uh, yes, I have to get in touch with... Uh, Designed by humans, because that they, they, that's what they were offering at the beginning. But I don't know if they took the the um, the zip hoodies off or not. Um, we need all seasons of reviews on the run. I need a lot more members. I need <laughs> I need many many more members because um, I need a budget in order to get all of that stuff. I've I I was thinking. Oh, we got to vote for Twitch from Abby Jamison and a super chat. Thank you. I was thinking about. Um, uh, I think always think of what to do with the archives, but I'm realizing like I have enough episodes, just episodes, not just the raw footage, but I have enough episodes to post a new video every day for the next ten years, and uh, that's a lot of work, man. So I need a I need a budget, and uh, you know, of course, I'm always talking with potential partners and sponsors and all that, but uh, it's it's not just going to be like get them all up that's not going to happen especially if we're going to do it right like you you guys want to be able to search for things right so do i um and so it takes time to kind of place it all and pick the thumbnails and do all of that stuff it's it's a job uh <laughs> blair farrell i knew people were going to be asking about going back into the, the hot tub fun socks fun socks james s i'm just by myself right now <laughs> i can't get it all done uh, uh remind me again and play these games which you guys want to hear about as someone who has gone through the uh, motions streaming on youtube on a regular epn channel saves a lot of time but it looks like you also edit things i don't like subscribing to multiple channels well rex that is fantastic uh feedback i appreciate that very much rex boyo I hope I'm saying your last name correctly there. Vic, just put your wife and kid to work, Kashimoto. My wife and kid are going to run to the hills if I ever say anything like that. No! It, it is a lot of work. Um, Didn't have much else to say, so no problem. Should, Abby Jameson should be fine if not simultaneously broadcasting to both. Where is the hot tub? I think it's at your place, Marco. I uh, don't have a hot tub. That hot tub that we that I posted the little video from was from our one of either mine or Tommy's 
hotel room in, in Las Vegas. And we shot in the... We shot everywhere. I, I almost started to follow it up with lots of other examples of crazy places. This is, I'm talking about a tweet that went out uh, from me on the weekend because everybody's talking about these hot tub streams on Twitch. And I went, well, you know what? Tommy and I did that in 2001. Why don't I post <laughs> a little uh, gif of that moment? And uh, people seem to enjoy that gif quite a bit. Uh, all right. So I didn't hear any of what uh, Out of Time just told me to do. Um, so I have to go defeat Lupa Lupin. Oh, Vague Zone Podcast with more wisdom, more advice. I'm more partial to YouTube, but regardless, whatever you do, I will support you. Play forever! Nodding 56, you're the best. The OG hot tub boy, Nick Seabright. That's that's the strange thing about a career that stretches on and on in, in, uh, in this space. Uh, I've done a little bit of everything. <laughs> which I'm very grateful for. But, um, you know, all, uh, people keep trying. The, the thing that's new to me still, well, not so new now, but has been new is streaming and talking. Um, that was that blew my mind. It's like, well, because I had done a whole 20-year career of cutting things and then, like, setting the thing afloat and, and then hearing from you guys on, did you like it? That, you know, and then suddenly we started to do more live streaming and I, it was it was nerve-wracking right to go live with a game so to be judged on your game playing like i'm not really showing that off so well right now and uh, also your ability to communicate at the same time scary uh but i've gotten a little bit more comfortable with it and thanks for your patience um okay so i gotta get out of this cavern question tell us a crazy epn vegas story or any moment where the drinks flowed and the developers started talking, no names, of course. Uh, well, the early days of the Game Developers Conference, which wasn't in Vegas. I, I'll tell you, I got sick of Vegas. Vegas is not my favorite city. I, I had never been to Vegas. You wanted a Vegas story? I had never been to Vegas. And then one year, there was like five events in Vegas. <laughs> And by the fifth one, I was like, I never want to come back here again. It was it was just crazy. It was unbearably hot, of course. Um, and then you you see a lot of desperate people when you're in Vegas. You see a lot of people just like, you know, standing in front of machines or tables with just like, like, you know, they're going through stuff. And it's hard to watch. Um, and it's so cynical, you know. Um, it, it is a fun escape, but you can certainly OD on Vegas very quickly. And I, I discovered that uh, because I went to so many things in Vegas in a concentrated amount of time. Uh, but at the old Game Developers Conference was, uh, was insane because everybody was in their 20s. And uh, everybody, all the marketing people, the executives, the developers, and there was everybody had a little bit of money. And everybody was just getting hammered drunk. And, and you know, part of it back then was to kind of celebrate and have a party. And, and they used to have, uh, everybody would stay in the same hotels. And, and they used to do um, hotel crawls. You know, you go from one room to another and just get blasted. <laughs> and so, you know, when, when we were just starting out, and we were like the only camera crew that was going to GDC. And I still have this footage, by the way. Waits on the path. We we didn't know when to shoot and when not to shoot because we were like, you know, covering all of it, and so we uh, we just brought the camera along on on uh, first couple of years going to parties and stuff, and and I remember we got some uh, pretty inebriated individuals in the video game industry on camera being goofballs, and uh, you know learned, you know we can't really use this. This cannot be put on television. That was fun, but yes, we cannot we cannot air that. Uh, but that's what I, why I, I love the video game industry. I mean, it's very different now. It's a lot more policed and, and PRs everywhere and a little more clenched and the dollars are bigger, the pressure's higher. But it's an incredibly accepting medium and industry and uh, it's just filled with such warm, smart people. It was always fun, C. Smith. I mean, if you look at any of our older E3 
E3 is a party, and, and it that used to be even more so. You guys know that. You've heard all the stories. Uh, but you would see, like, no Tommy or, or myself or uh, uh, other hosts, like in the early days, There's we would totally lose our voice in the first or second day of our trip to E3. Situation. And so there were episodes airing. We were talking like that. So totally like that. An and... Uh, but everybody was talking like that. It wasn't just us. Everybody was like that. We'd have people answering like that, too. I used to be solely about YouTube, but Twitch has a lot of fun community interaction stuff. It won me over, Abby Jameson. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely curious, especially to hear you talking about Twitch so much, Abby. He knew his time would come, and he was patient. Okay, so I gotta beat this lion guy. Everybody's a little bit fluffy and fierce in Biomutant. See the comp. I, I'm, I'm whiffing past the character. Oh my, uh, that, my um, uh, automaton is a turret now. By the way, is helping me out here. See, it looks pretty good. It's just there, there is a um, there's a tactility that's missing, you know. When you play um, Ghost of Tsushima, I think is what's ruined it for <laughs> a lot of open world action adventure games. Because after you play that, you know you want to have excellent combat in any of this stuff. So, oh, what am I doing? I can level up. Can I level up in the middle of a fight? That's a little bit weird, right? I have a point that I can use right now. Why don't I make it... My melee damage is tougher. Okay, cool. I can level up in the middle of a fight. Okay, and I've got uh, some perks here. Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I might have some more stuff here. In my uh, mutations. Do I have any? Nope. My Psy powers. Oh, I have six. Okay, so I can freeze. Um, let's put that in... I'm going to bind that to the X button. Okay. So I'll show you the freeze power right there. So you know, so there's magic abilities. I mean, this is what I'm telling you. It's, it's, a, it, it's a robust game. Oh, I'm trying to heal myself. Oh, I use quite a bit of my heal packs from... The bo last boss fight that I was just on. Hole in Dan Sock. Good to see you. Oh, where did he go? I was looking away. Where did he go? There he is. Okay. Oh, he's got like a big leg of lamb or something. I also have a a boomerang. It's, it's just there's too much. Like they they scaled up too high to perfect stuff. So you've got a lot of cool things in this game that don't feel perfect, which is okay. This has got such a generic name, too, that, like a lot of AA stuff in previous game console generations, we're going to have a tough time recalling what the hell this game was. But I know that this is going to be a very popular game for a lot of people. A lot of people are going to dig it. Because that's the way this kind of experience goes. There's a lot of people that, like, you, you mentioned a AA game from... I don't know, PS3 or something like that, and they just flip out. Like, we were talking about Haven the other day, and I, I, I don't know if anybody thinks Haven is the best experience. What was that John Woo Midway game? A lot of people love that game. Um, and there was some cool stuff in that, for sure. PsyOps is one that I love. And uh, Saboteur. Ooh. Ooh. 
So I've used up a lot of... Alright, let's use my trumpet gun. My silly trumpet gun. Man, who wants a trumpet gun? Okay, took him out. Stranglehold, there it is. See, you guys know. Daniel Wilson, it is a little bit clumsy for sure. Look at that. Look, everybody's lighting up with stranglehold right there. See, we remember those things, right? Marco A. Haven was a cute game, but didn't have a lot of deep gameplay. Interesting world and story. Uh, yeah. Uh, Miro Yoku 7, good to see you. And Chris uh, Borealis, it, it's almost like they give you too many options. It looks like it could be overwhelming. It is. And I. I kind of like that about it you know like at the beginning of the game i'm like what the hell is i was getting annoyed because of the way that they were telling the story and i got this new weapon this piece of junk weapon with a tin can on it and i should be excited about that not really not not excited about that but i know it will um it will bash the crap out of the bad guys okay so i gotta go back to return to out of date okay here we go Dying Light 2 on Thursday as well. We're getting news on that. So Thursday is going to be busy. Holy moly. All right. Um, oh, maybe I can fast travel. Let's see. That'll save some time. There we go. Boop. Got this piece of junk, Daniel Wilson. All right, here we go. Duke's feet in village are gross. Take a good look around you. Oh, come on. I didn't want to jump to my death. I wanted to... I wanted to hover. I wanted to float. Uh, Gunrunner, you guys are talking about who said Sam I Am 111. The sequel was called Gunrunner. Cool. Um, reviews kind of killed this game already, Mr. Mass Produce. Yeah, people um, have not been enthused. The top of the world is so low down here. So why didn't that pop up before? Let's see if I can do that. Okay. Sort of work. Okay. All right. That little robot sound is my automaton. So you can see a spaceship here, right? So it's kind of like uh, hinting at either uh, um, an alien invasion or the future of humanity. We, uh, we built spaceships. Out of date says that from what he's heard, you've been busy. Mr. Mass Producer is as asking chat, what does everyone want to see on Thursday besides Horizon? I'm I'm psyched to see the new Sonic stuff. I'm also psyched to see. Uh, I guess E3's coming, right? I actually got an email for the first booking of um, interview appointments and hands on, virtual hands on for E3. Peter Kokosar is feeling a bit desperate for a real AAA announcement that could fall out 5, Black Flag 2, Red Dead Redemption 3. Well, Horizon's a real AAA announcement. That's going to look insane. sound good. Out of date was spot on. The hoof puff needs to be stopped. Okay. I'm, again, not paying attention. Out of date says that Noko is worried now that the Eastern World Eater is stepping up its activity. Okay, so he's telling me that I have to go drop another World Eater. And so you see that they have this gibberish that these characters talk to you. And then this guy, uh, who sounds like the Little Big Planet narrator, I forget his name, Stephen something, does the narration and explains what the guy just said. So every conversation just goes on forever. And you're like, I don't care. Just give me a weapon with a tin can on it so I can go kill the World Eater. Uh, Red Dead 3 will be announced in the year 2410, Nick Seabright says. <laughs> so we're going to have a little bit of a wait. Um, I forgot what I was supposed to do. I'm off. I don't care. You got, you'll got you put a dot on the map, and I'll just go kill that thing, wherever it is. Let's go. Um, the Note Groomer. My new main quest. Quest. All right. Especially at the beginning, Cyber 64. 
Max Payne remake. Ooh, I like the way you're thinking, Johnny McFly. I would love to see three again. That game holds up. Try not to get turned around in the dark. All right, so I gotta go visit Noko, and I've never been to see Noko before. So, all right, so here we go. Big game, lots to see, lots of areas to explore. Okay, let's get my note. And I actually like the music too, that was one thing I didn't talk about. I do, I do like the music in the game. It's very chill, the game is chill. Like you're not really, you're trying to figure out what, you know, some of the choices and decipher some of the gibberish and it's long on detail that you, you you know feels a little extraneous, but you know, and it's and all of that it is definitely a little bit frustrating. But at at the core is still this new mysterious world to go and explore, and they've done a pretty good job with that. These things give you some psi energy, but I've already done that one. How you doing, Plop? Good to see you. Legacy of Cain would be great. There you go. Breath of the Wild paragliding. Absolutely, Daniel Wilson. Hip Hop Dan is here. It's a party. You know, if Hip Hop Dan and Plop are here, this is a rager. This party's a banger. All right, so let's get in here. Hip Hop Dan and Plop. It sounds like a like a DJ. It's like, it's like a new new band right there. Uh oh, don't go in there. Okay, so uh, this area is biocontaminated. Okay, don't have it's the stuff really to go in there. Hazardous. Okay. All right, come here, Nyot. If the mount didn't throw you, there was a warrior sequel but it was based on 1960s British punk culture. So a little Clockwork Orange-ish. So I can't go through there, can I? Oh, I've got new Wung Fu. Okay, what does that mean? All right, so yeah, that, you've learned all these different maneuvers here, but I don't have... Uh, tiger throw, okay. I don't have the bones, the bone tags. Look at all of these collectibles, bio points, psi points. These are my, uh, my auras, my, uh, you know, light or dark auras. I don't have any, uh, okay. Yeah, it's just buckling. There's so many systems. Vic, you should start your own EP channel on Pluto TV or Plex or something like that. Um, I, I, you know, if I had the resources to manage that and do that, I would do more of that. Absolutely. There are tons of ways to get stuff out, and uh, trust me, I'm still, I'm hustling behind the scenes like not only am I hustling to just keep up with all the stuff that's going on and make uh, fresh content all the time but uh, behind the scenes I'm always having conversations so who knows still making my way but the, you know the one thing that I, I definitely don't want to do is get caught up in and I've said this before in any kind of uh, negotiations or big deal making that just takes me forever to complete and I put all my hopes on that and uh I'm not making stuff. I'd rather just make stuff. There's new things going on every single day. Exciting things. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Of course, if I'm making things, I don't have a lot of time to uh, sell things. Ooh, okay, so these characters have gotten a little bit tougher. But I've beat up giant world eaters, so I should be able to beat up these muskrats and the mudonk. We were working on that, Nodding 56. Ok, 
Come on, give me the heal. Let's go. Little help here, Automaton. This area's gotten a little bit tougher for sure. I've seen a lot of uh, interesting, uh, you know, animal critter type games that have underwhelmed in my career. I've seen that again and again, like racing games and fighting games and combat games. I don't think it's easy to pull off. I mean, you've got Ratchet and Clank and Sly Cooper. Crash Bandicoot. But there's been a lot of games that haven't connected with little um, animal protagonists. There's a huge history of that. Okay. This is all about you. Whether you succeed or fail, it's on you. All right. Fur fighter, there you go. Vic, Vic doggy coin. <laughs> it's doggy coin, right, Marco? Way? It's not dodge coin, is it? Or doge coin? Isn't it doggy? Um... My companion is my automaton. Good question. Who is that? That is uh, B Honeydew. So it just has these little beeps and blurps. It's doggy, right? Duke Togo. I keep seeing like analysts and stuff that I'm sure it just freaks them out when they see. They've been calling it Dodge Coin. Tomato, tomato. There you go. EPN video game. <laughs> the game would consist of me sitting in front of a television, playing games, and then racing, trying to find clips and footage and write scripts and get stuff together and then edit little pieces and clip everything together and set up the lights and the cameras and turn on all those things behind me and then take a breath and then go live! That's the game. Actually, it sounds like a pretty interesting game. I guess that is my meta game every day. Lots of empty space. I always call it dog coin. It is. I, it, it, Abby, it's it's amazing because it, it takes hours to get prepped. You know, it just does. Whether I edit it or I go live with it, it takes hours. Unless I just went live and didn't have any footage and guys just looked at me for the whole time. Um, I, which I wouldn't be comfortable with, I have to be honest. Uh, I... It takes hours. It just does. And so it's just like, oh my god, okay, go, go, get it all, get it, get, look at the time, look at the time. And uh, and then when you sit down to do it, it's just like, oh, well, that was fun, and now we just get to play and chat for a little while. And it's over quick. Okay, so I got here, but I can't do anything? What's up? This was where you told me to go, No. Or maybe there's another way in. Okay. All right. Okay. This region is known as the Knoopstonies. You can't find a harder place in the world. Of course it is. The Knoopstonies. Sharp wood scrap there. Watch for splinters. What's the guy that narrates? Uh, Little Big Planet. This guy is totally riffing on him. 
What's his name? Steve Stephen F not Frears. I always forget his name. Oh, Abby. Thanks for supporting me. Thanks for being here. Uh, Miss Ojad, I absolutely will be playing uh, Knockout City. I didn't get to it on the weekend because I was playing this and, uh, and uh, Wonder Boy. But it's in the queue. I'll stream some. Tomorrow I'm going to stream um, the Asha game. Wonder Boy, Asha, and Monster World. I can't, I can't remember the, the order of those words ever. Uh, but then, uh, maybe on, um, Thursday I'll stream some Knockout City. I'm also playing something that I can't wait to talk about. I cannot talk about it yet. Fighting goats. Okay, so oh, I have the, this thing now. Right, I forgot about that. Like you have so many systems, you forget what you have. Oh. So I have these poison attacks that I can send out. It just it feels almost like you're playing a uh, MMORPG. You know what I'm saying? Where it, you, you don't quite feel the connection. It's like you're playing DC Universe Online or whatever that was called. Where you press the button and then there's a second delay. You can chain things together. You can pull off combos, but it's just not... It's not super rewarding. Okay, I have a new backpack that I can put on, so I... Change my look a little bit here. Let's get into the menus here for a second. So my character. No, not my character. My gear. Uh, and it's... That. The back. Backpack. So I have a backpack. So that changed. So I had this. I had a crib basket. Now I've got a backpack. Okay. But I can't change it. I can't modify it unless I go into craft. Which is nuts. You should just be able to. Oh, I, can, I can't anyways. Okay, I have a new helmet. Nope. Clunky. All right, so gear, let's go up to the head. Uh, I have night motto. That is creepy as hell, isn't it? Um, yeah, I still haven't gotten anything that's more powerful armor-wise than uh, this crazy Sly Cooper freakathon <laughs> helmet that I have. Okay. Uh, is it? I don't have anything for the face. No. Right shoulder. Okay, the torso. Nothing there. I don't have my twin shooter yet. Okay. All right. Can I craft anything? Let's see. Nope. All right. Let's just get back into it. Okay. Oh. Good morning to you. Oh, I need to... Uh, so I can... This is another mount, I think. So I need some... Ah, the Gnote Pen. Nocco never leaves this place. She's always put the living things first. There's Nocco. It's a bit weird, isn't it, Mondo Blasto? Question. Would you consider applying as a publication on OpenCritic? I've been hoping someday to see EPN reviews show up on there. Uh, I'll look into it, JBJ. A lot of the, uh, like, Metacritic... The, what was the other one? They, they're, it's not around anymore. The game... It's become personal to her too, I forget. Game rankings. Uh, they needed us to... Um, 
uh, present all like everything in textual form and we don't always do that i do a lot of the reviews without a script so we don't have a a script or a written review that we can hand over but hopefully people are starting to move towards a little bit more video acknowledgement that that would be awesome but maybe i have to provide some kind of a uh uh you know a capsule quote or something from the video review it's a lot of a lot of chat going on today it's hard to keep up with everything uh well, listen, help me out. If you've got a question or something you want me to hit, um, just put it in all caps for me, okay? Bam, the dark wins again, right? Right? I don't know. That's right. Think. The right thing is right there. Oh, shut that light off, would you? Makes me so they have this the squabble. Asks how many paths you've wandered in the world, and if you ever wonder about what might have changed if you'd taken different ones. You can't. Okay, so Simlish. The world is going to live would have been crushed to see all the gnotes die with it. Likes that you stood up for the world and spurred your way toward helping it out. Ah, uh, you rock, Abby. Thanks for being here. Saw the light with the myriad. They always bring a sparkliness to any day, and sometimes the nights do. Um, sparkliness. They're just so shiny. Makes her smile to But let's not speak. She has an Okay, what's going on? Just all right. You should lead the Majut back. It's the most magnificent creature she's ever encountered. All right, I gotta go find the Majut. <laughs> I have. It's over this way. Note. <laughs> Mondo Blasto, is that what's happening? Everybody's skipping through. I mean, it, it just is so clunky. They, they could have done a much better job with telling you the story. Nope, can't go in there. Okay. I always run right into waterfalls. Are you guys like that? Don't forget the past. Learn from it. Okay. You found the Majut Meadow. Watch out for the Majut. Kill these little goat people just for existing. Sorry, guys. You're all doomed. I'm going to use my. Uh, what is it? I have a spatula with some kind of pointy stick. <laughs> this is my weapon. Or my trumpet gun. Okay, I've got you. Okay, come on, Majut. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Cyber 64, we should be playing a Mandalorian game right now, right? Okay. So. Flat the rat. Oh, look at that. Majut is helping me. Trumpet gun. Combat's pretty weak. Luxo Flux, man. 
I love chatting with Lexoflux back in the day. They were so exciting, you know? Twisted Metal needs to come back. Those franchises were great. Okay. So. I don't know where Majut is, but... Majut is back. Okay. Crossway. Here we go. Let's go. Bomb bong gummy. New main quest. Make your way to the crossway. So there's a lot of that. Go get something, bring it back. Look at those notices on the board. And then it sends you to Too another bad thing. The notes couldn't read them. If you wander around here, you might find Noko. She just loves those gnotes. Once the power ran out, it made sense to ride gnotes. Powered types of truck. Watch your. Okay, new side quest: pony pen. Follow the trail. All right, so we're. Here. Where the hell's the trail? Where is it? Am I following it right? So if I look that way, no. That's weird. Am I on the trail? Yeah. Okay. Found it. Even under all the muck in the gnote pen. Hard to believe the gnotes didn't trample it. Yes, ludicrous fool 79, but they were... Um in competition, and they're both not around right now. Um, okay, here we go. Are goats, are gnotes polluting? The kind you should. All right. There's a lot of underground stuff in this game as well, and I, I would imagine a lot of underwater stuff because I've been. Uh, Slowly piecing together a watercraft that I think will be a submersible. There's a lot in this game, for sure. Lots of really interesting stylistic differences between uh, environments as well. Alright. Lots of junk to find. Help you make junky weapons with. Okay. JBJ, we did a... Uh, I ran the uh, This Day and Everything Cool about Star Wars in 77, but also Alien in 79. This is a big, epic day. May 25th. I was nervous to see Star Wars that first... The, for the first one. Um, just from the trailers and stuff, Darth Vader and uh, um, Chewbacca freaked me the hell out. But when I did see it, so it took me a little while. My mom was excited to take my brother and I. Uh, but when we did finally see it, it changed everything. Completely blew my freaking mind. So yes, I did see Star Wars in 1977 in the theater. And it was surreal. How many of you saw Star Wars in the theater, the, the original? And I was too young to see Alien. Can't wait to get on flatter ground. Okay, so where am I trying to go? Oh, make my way to the crossway. Okay. So I got everything I needed out of there. Miss Ojat. Saw it on VHS. Wasn't even born yet. Cyber 64. I saw Star Wars over 50 times in the theater. That's incredible. I saw... I must have seen it, I don't know, seven or eight times in the theater. Take it easy, JBJ. Um, but I, um, I saw Raiders, my favorite movie of all time, um, 13 times it, that the summer it came out. At the theater. I kept going back. VHS. Alien on cable. 1997 Star Wars. Last Disciple. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... I'm not, I'm not so sure if... There would be an EP... 
if Star Wars didn't come out. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I don't know if there'd be a lot of things in this world that we take for granted if Star Wars didn't come out and blow our minds. My, Mike Smitty got the EPN shirt in the mail. That rocks, man. That's awesome. Which vendor did you get it from? Okay, so we want to get up there. So climb on that sucker up there. That's amazing, pathetic Earthling. I saw um, episode one. Remember, we were doing, uh, we were at Man's Chinese Theater. Or I think that's what it was called. Um, back, I mean, we had the show running then when episode one came out. And so we went to visit all the people that were lined up for months at a time to go to the movie. I interviewed a bunch of people. That was a blast. But we happened to be shooting EP and we're, we were in the Bay Area, Tommy and Zoe and I. And uh, so we all went to a midnight screening of episode one together and it was awesome. The movie wasn't awesome, but the, the experience was awesome. It was completely packed with Star Wars love and lightsabers and people in costumes. It was so cool. But uh, the movie was a bit sleepy at midnight. <laughs> it was not what we were expecting. So I'm collecting a bunch of stuff here. Let's see. Empire was the most mind-blowing thing for me because by the time Empire had come out, I was able to go to the uh, uh, movies with just my friends, and I was first in line to see Empire in Vancouver, and holy crap, that movie was just... It, like Star Wars was mind-blowing, but Empire was just another level. It was like all of these different planets and all of these different realities that were created in that film. So incredible. The ad at uh, Battle, the Snow Speeders, Yoda, Cloud City, like just beat after beat. It was just insane. The vision for that film. Ugh, incredible. This is turning out to be quite an expedition. Yeah, I've got a whole bunch of garbage. <laughs> Mondo Blasto, yeah, there's a direct through line there. And of course, you know, I ha I've had a long relationship with the folks at, at Lucas um, covering their work. All the games and all that stuff, visiting the studios, visiting Skywalker Ranch, getting to know a lot of people that work there and becoming friends with them over the years. That All of that has just been surreal. And Lu Lucas in general uh, was just so accommodating and so receptive to our crazy idea good. and and would work with us in a bunch of different ways giving us sometimes 3d models and things that we would incorporate into some of our sequences um as effects and we got them to do lightsaber duels and and uh big battles in the forest and it was just a blast loved loved working with them and l looking forward to working with them now you know because all of their new stuff that they've got cooking Definitely not open. Not open. So there's stuff on the inside. It's kind of uh, Last of Us style looting in this game. Going through the rubbish. Okay, let's get up. You can tell though, right? Super playable. Like the game is not stopping me and and like I'm not getting angry at it. It's very easy to just get lost in this game. Alpha Cat, I'm supposed to be um I it might be a theater. Um I'll I'll let you guys know, but um I I've, I've been in touch with Paramount and and uh they they may be setting up a screening 
uh, for Quiet Place Part 2. So, and that might be very soon. So, we'll see. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to review Riders of Justice. It's already out, so... Um, At least the rain doesn't burn. Uh, I'll just rent it. But I want to see it, because I'm a Mads Mikkelsen fan, and the movie looks fun. And I've heard good things. And I'm caught up on Superman and Lois, and boy, I'm liking that show. That show is a lot of fun. And I'll have some thoughts on, um... Got to time it right to make what? Work. I'll have some thoughts on the new Bad Batch this week. And, uh, MODOK as well. Broke a sweat for nothing. Absolutely, Orion's Angel. That's gonna be the plan. Did I screw that up? Okay, so. Well. One arm, then the other. Pumping good, looking better. All right. Awkward. Hello, Mr. Quasimodo. 007. 007. I love that the chat is uh, actively participating in Star Wars Convo on May 25th. That's great. Where am I supposed to go? Oh, okay, I'm supposed to get up there. Okay. Yeah, weather effects. I mean, this is way too much game for 20 people to make. That's that's what I keep thinking is, you know, this... this uh, I, and maybe they're super experienced, and that's how they could achieve this. But this is a big game. Not a good place to dance. Okay. So I got here, and there's nothing here. Well, that's dumb. Uh, all right. Where do we go? I get, why make all of that effort to get me over here? Oh, because of this one. Nothing can stop you. Okay. All right. That was a little uncharted like. Locked but good. Locked but That's good. A okay. Blind box okay. Oh, very simple puzzles as well. Most of them that I've played so far. For those who have That's coin it. Left for fun. Cranks like these usually need to be wound. What you see is what you get. Once it's out of the blind box, that is. Yeah, I have to do that. I have to register, Lost Disciple. Thanks for uh, reminding me. I'm going to take care of that. You flick the switches in order to green light the current and activate the electrons in the panel. Just a few moves left. Make them count. I don't... I mean, this is just all... I'm just guessing. Good. Are you excited IOI is... Uh, um, IO Interactive is handling the 007 game? The Hitman series is definitely one. I'm so stoked, Johnny McFly. I've talked about that. I, I think that company is fantastic. I love Hitman 3. That's one of the best games of the year. That and... Um, uh, Monster Hunter Rise, I keep forgetting how fantastic those two games are. I think we take them for granted a little bit, but they're amazing games. Two of the best of the year. I love Cyber Shadow. Um, I think I might do a little just before E3. That's a, listen to the creatures of the night. Looks just like before E3, so in the next couple weeks, I'll put a little uh, a uh, favorite things of of 2021 so far. Wired up and ready to go. You make that work. Glad you covered that up. All right, here we go. So I got all that stuff. And is it going to be any good? 
That is the question. Okay, where do we go here? The resource totem. Okay, so there's a resource totem where I just bash something. Now, where is that? It should be in this town somewhere. There it is. Okay. Oop. And then Mount Pip Food. Oh, and superb loot. So I need some food for... What is this? This looks like it might be... No. Cutesy. I need some food for the Nyot. I found all the stuff I needed for Noko. But I didn't find the food. Radium syrup. Is there something else in here? No, open that. Can I go up? No. No. I need one more piece of superb loot. Let's see what's in here. Okay, I just need the pip food. Now, where am I going to find that? Where's the pip food? Darkness makes you miss the light. Where it be? Nope, did that. That's closed. Do oh, just got this. Okay. Got everything except the Mount Pip food. a locked door over here. Which I opened. No. Oh. Maybe this. There we go. No. Hmm. Looking for one damn thing. Where is it? Unless I got it all. Time is the better time for lots of things. One last scour through here. It's not popping up anymore, so maybe I did find it. Yeah, I think I did. Okay. I'll hop out of the town and see if that thing pops up anymore. Yep, okay. I got it. I got the food for the Nyot, too. Okay. So, let's fast travel back here. Boop. With its attention diverted to the chewy bonbon gummy, the This kind of cool game is good for the chat. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some curiosity about this game, right? All of it has been kind of mysterious. 
If she remembers correctly, she spotted it at the Smilo Shopperia while scavenging for treats for the Gnotes. That's not... Find the Mechum Jut. Okay. So let's see. That's a walk. Okay. It's on the Xbox Series X, by the way. I've heard that it runs a little bit better on the Xbox than PlayStation 5. But only because of timing, I believe. And, and resources. Like, they didn't have enough people to optimize. I did like Army of the Dead Chris Smith. It's stupid, but it was... Really fun. It was very stylish. It's a beautiful game, man. They did a really good job with the world building in this. There's a lot going on. You finally found the village of Bumbledoff. I did. I found the village of Bumbledoff. It's like they just put consonants and vowels together. Bumbled off. Let's go talk to people. This guy's got something for me. Says everything's changing in these dark coming days. Nothing stays the same. It is, isn't it, Peter Cook? That's what I'm saying. Like, you can just chill out, relax, be this fluffy assassin, and. <laughs> Hours go by, and that's that's what I found over the weekend. I wasn't hating the game. I didn't like the opening, but I, I started to get into it. Right on, Orion's Angel. Okay. Um, let's go get the uh, the main quest there. Good draw distance. Lots of nice little details in the foliage and the uh, rock formations. Colors are pretty sweet. It's a ride, not a friend, right? This is Crackdown 3, Teen Laquifa. Last Disciple. Yeah, people aren't holding back. I can I can totally uh, appreciate the criticisms for this. Guess shopping here put a smile on your face. All right. Yeah, the com combat won't be mistaken for uh, Ghost of Tsushima or Days Gone or anything like that. Death to goat people. Got him. All right. Eye boxes like this are few and far. Oh, so they have TVs. However, that's no. They call them eye boxes. Talking pictures from the aforetimes lacked a message. Cyber 64, it's a slow burn. Let's see if I can switch out anything on my uh, my gear now. Ooh, that's a much better one. That sucker. A reaper. Uh, 
I don't like that I've been playing for hours and I got those um, plaid pants or whatever they're called ages ago and I haven't gotten anything better than that. Since. Uh, layered pads. What's this? Ooh, I, this goes up to 14. But no key energy. Okay. Okay. All right, what's my where's my gear? So that's what I that's what I look like without my crazy outfit on. My Mad Max outfit. So freaky. All right. Um, so you can, I can strip them all down as well. So where am I? Where are my actual weapons? Where's my gun? Gear outfits inventory oh yeah you can make your own weapons too um, okay let's level up my dude beefed up Melee attacks are better. Okay, and I've got an upgrade point. Let's go into crack shot. Sure, why not? And I've got two bio points. Let's see, we got biogenetics. Nope, don't have enough, but I can upgrade my resistance. So why don't we go uh, anti biohazard and anti cold? There we go. And then the one thing that I did want to do is craft Proves it, okay. The wrench improves it, but I need that O ring still. It's so dumb, okay. All right. So I've collected all that stuff, but I didn't scrap anything, so I can't really, can't really do much. And I didn't buy any of the. Um, uh, new ingredients or anything like that. What's down there? Needs a key. Needs a key. All right, here we go. Whoosh. So we're gonna com uh, we're gonna complete this objective, and then um, uh, and then I'm gonna wrap it up. But I'll be back tomorrow. The underworld is like a whole new frontier. I do dig that. There's lots of underground areas, caves, and um, basements, and subway tunnels, all kinds of 
dilapidated old spaces for you to explore. So lots of above ground. It's a cool game. It is. It's just not finished. Okay. Okay. Oh, I see. Just a few moves left. Make them count. No. Oh, I screwed up. Bristles like the hair of one electrified. You need to line up the All right, here we go. So match. Good. That's enough electric current to initiate the mm. activate the framework. Good question, Wood. Off the top of my head, I'm thinking of Monster Hunter Rise and um, Hitman 3. I'm forgetting stuff. Returnal. Um, loved Cyber Shadow. That's a good question. What, what, do you, what about you guys? Returnal is just so freaking now, hold on. amazing. Up. There should be more cliffs here. You need to loosen the bolts. It takes two was amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it it takes two was so good. There we go. Resident Evil Eight was so good. Yeah. Yeah. Time to stop horsing around and get the sit tight back to Noko. Okay. So now I have a robot horse. And we'll just. Can I fast travel? No, I'm on a mount. Okay. I wonder if I can. I haven't tried that yet, so I'll. I should be able to fast travel when the mount stays with me. Let's see. Maybe not. Oh, well. I'll just see. You'll find Mito at Bright Light. He's a light-headed fellow, but hopefully he'll remember. Mito knows. Okay, so I have... Oh, where, where did my metal horse go? Oh, that's right there. Okay. Okay. Uh, that is good. I'm going to save. And I'm going to stop there. I will probably play a little bit more of this and, and uh, come back to you with uh, some kind of fleshed out thoughts um but i i have been enjoying it uh but i've been enjoying playing with you guys it's much more fun to play with other people like this so thank you so much for joining me i got a comment here hey vic uh bc announced their reopening plan if things go good you could be back in the vfs studio by september 7th uh stay tuned stay tuned on that i have started to have some initial conversations with folks out there. Uh, but uh, uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I'll be back again tomorrow with uh, another rundown, and we'll do another Let's Play tomorrow of um, uh, Monster <laughs> Wonder Boy Asha in Monster World. I'll get that right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you to our new EPN members. Thanks for the super chats. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. And until then, play forever.